Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. Thank you so much for choosing to spend a little time with us during our Sunday morning worship experience. And I pray that you will receive something that will help you on your Christian journey. Let us pray. Our Father, open our eyes so that we can see sin as it really is. And then reveal the sin that is in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our subject for today is sin within us that we can't see. Sin within us that we can't see. Our text is found in Romans chapter 7, verses 7 through 11, and I'm reading the English Standard Version. That's Romans chapter 7, verse 7 through 11. Uh, verse 7 says, What then shall we say, that the law is sin? By no means. Yet, if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. For I would not have known what it is to covet. If the law had not said to me, you shall not covet. But sin seized an opportunity through the commandment produced in me all kinds of covetousness. And for far apart from the law, sin lies dead. And I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive and I died. And verse 10 says, uh, the very commandment that, the, that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin seized an opportunity through the commandment to deceive me and through it to kill me. Now, uh, I've got three bullet points for you this morning. The first one comes from verse uh, seven, and it uh, is the law reveals sin. The law reveals sin. And then uh, verse eight and nine, the law arouses sin. And then the remaining verses uh, 10 and 11 deals with the idea of the law kills. The law kills kills. Uh, now, the first point, uh, the law reveals sin, uh, verse 7, I'll read it again. Uh, what then shall we say? That the law is sin? By no means. Yet, if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin, for I would not have known what it is to covet. If the law had said, had not said, you shall not covet. Now, the law is the knowledge of sin. Romans, uh, that, that's explained in Romans chapter uh, 3 and verse 20. The law is the knowledge of sin. Uh, the very commandments that promised life, Paul says in the 10th verse of our text, uh, proved to be death to me. For sin seized an opportunity through the commandment to deceive me and through it kill me. Where there is no law, there is no transgressions. Romans 4 and 15. Now, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4 says, Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Now that's a biblical definition for sin. I know all of us have our, 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 our idea, idea of what sin is, but that's a biblical definition of sin. For sin is the transgression of the law. Going into an area that you have been forbidden to go into, that you have been instructed not to go into. You've been given a reason that just like when you're driving, if you where you see a yellow white a yellow line, you're not supposed to cross over it because there's oncoming traffic that you might not be aware of, not might, might not be able to see, and it can be life threatening, and it could end even in death if you crossed into an area that you were forbidden to go in. Now, the law is a mirror that reveals the inner man and shows us how dirty we are. Uh, James uh, chapter 1, verse 22 through 25. Now, note that Paul did not use murder, 
or stealing or adultery in his discussion, he uses coveting. This is the last of the Ten Commandments, and it differs from the other nine in that it is an inward attitude, not an outward action. Coveting uh, is an inward attitude. It's not a outward uh, action. Covetousness leads to the breaking of the commandments. All of the other you can find hinges on falling prey to covetousness because all of the other uh, leads to the breaking of the other commandments. Now, it is, an, uh, uh, it is an deceptive sin that most people never recognize in their own lives, but God's law reveals it. For instance, the rich uh, young ruler in Mark chapter 10, verse 17 through 27, that's a good example for us to use uh, to show that the law reveals sin and show uh, a man his needs for a savior. So the law reveals sin and shows us our need for a savior. Mark chapter 10, verse 17 through 27, and I'm reading the English Standard Version. It's about a young rich man. It says, and as he was sitting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not break. Uh, do not defraud. Uh, honor your father and mother. And he said unto him, teacher, all of these have I kept from my youth. Jesus said to him, uh, as he looked at him, and Jesus has a way of looking at you that reveals you to you. Verse 21 said, and Jesus looking at him, first of all, loved him and said to him, uh, you lack one thing. Go and sell all that you have and give to the poor. And then you will have treasures in heaven and come and follow me. This hardened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how difficult it is for, uh, uh, will be for those who have wealth to enter into the kingdom of God. Note, he did not say it was impossible. He said difficult. Verse 24 says, and the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how difficult it is to enter into the kingdom of God. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, it is impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. So the young man was very moral outwardly. He said, I have kept all of these from my youth. But he had never faced the sin that was within him. And Jesus did not tell him about the law because the law would, uh, uh, would save him. He told him about the law because uh, the young man did not realize his own sinfulness. And so often in life, we are quick to accuse somebody else or point out somebody else's shortcoming when we fail to realize our own sinfulness. It's true that this young man had never committed adultery or robbed anyone or given false witness or dishonored his parents. But what about covetousness? When Jesus told him to sell his goods and give to the poor, the man went away in great sorrow. Too often, people would rather lose their souls than to give up their wealth. Jesus is asking us a very important question in Mark uh, chapter 8, verse 37. He asks, 
or what shall a man, that's a woman, mankind, give in, an, in exchange for his soul? The commandment thou shalt not covet had revealed to him what a sinner he really was. And instead of admitting his sin, he rejected Jesus and went away unconverted. Now let's look at the, the second point. The law arouses sin. In verse 8 and 9, the law arouses sin. And it reads, But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. For apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive and I died. Since Paul was a devout Pharisee seeking to obey the law before his conversion, it's easier to understand these verses. And you can read Philippians chapter 3, verse 1 through 11 on your own. I don't have time to go through them now. And Galatians, the first chapter uh, for other audiographical data on Paul's relationship to the law in his unconverted days. Now, uh, keep in mind that uh, the strength of sin is the law. As it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56, since we have a sinful nature, the law is bound to arouse that nature that uh, the way a magnet draws steel. Something in human nature wants to rebel whenever the law or a law is given. You remember, if you were a normal child, how hard it was to not do something you were told not to do. And also, it wasn't easy to do what you were always told to do. We wanted to do it our way and when we wanted to do it. The child, that, that childish spirit is still a part of us and it's a progressive operation to reveal that to us even as we become adults. Years ago, I, as, a, as I was playing Pony League baseball uh, in West Helena, Arkansas, I often showed up early at the ballpark in eagerness to play ball. I love playing baseball. But one day I was standing in the park looking at a newly painted bench and I saw a notice, uh, a sign on it, on, on it was several benches and there, they had signs on them that said, do not touch. And as I watched from a distance, I saw a number of people deliberately reach out and touch the wet paint. Why? Because the sign told them not to. When my youngest grandson would visit us before COVID-19 uh, arrived, I would take him uh, to play golf with me. And he wasn't all that interested in golf. He just enjoyed being with his grandpa Henry. And so I would always take him because I enjoyed golf. But I'd instruct him not to go near the lake. And what would he always push to the limits to do? You got it. Go near the water because the carnal mind is hostile against God and his commandments. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be, as stated in Romans chapter 8, verse 7. Believers who try to live by rules and regulations discover that their legalistic system only arouses more sin, and creates more problems in our lives. The church, the, the churches in Galatia were very legalistic and they experienced all kinds of troubles. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed, Paul told him, that ye be not consumed one of another. Galatians 5 and 15. 
their legalism did not make them more spiritual and it does not make us more spiritual. It made them and us more sinful. Why? I'm glad you asked. Because the law arouses sin in our nature. The law arouses sin in our nature. The law, in essence, wakes up what's really in us. Let's move on to the third point found in verse uh, uh, 10 and 11 of Mark chapter 7. And it deals with the idea of the law kills. And it reads, the very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin, seize, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me and through it killed me. Galatians 3 and 21 says, for if there had been, had, had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the law cannot give life. The law cannot give us righteousness or a right standing with God. The law was not designed to uh, do what the blood of Jesus does, covers our sin and washes all of our sins away. The law was not even designed to do that. It can only show sinners that we are guilty and condemned. And we have been justified with God. We are being sanctified with God. And when Jesus returns and the work of the Holy Spirit is over with, we will be glorified with God. It's a three-stage process. Justification, sanctification, and glorification. Now this example uh, it explains why legalistic Christians and churches do not grow or bear spiritual fruit. They live by the law and the law always kills. Few things are more dead than an orthodox church or a legalistic uh, church that is proud of its high standards and tries to live up to them in its own energy. Often, the members of such a church starts to judge and condemn one another, as in Galatia. And the sad result in a church is a fight, and then a church split that leaves members or former members angry and bitter with one another. As the new Christian grows, he becomes or comes in contact with the various philosophies of the Christian life. He can read books, attend seminars, listen to tapes, and get a great deal of information. But if he's not careful, he will start following a human leader and accept his teaching or her teaching as the law. And this practice is very subtle. It's very sly. It comes up unexpectedly. Uh, it, 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 it's a subtle or sly form of legalism, and it kills spiritual growth. No human teacher can take the place of Christ. No book can take the place of the Bible. Men can give us information but only the spirit can give us illumination and help us to understand spiritual truth. The spirit enlightens us and enables us. No human leader can do that. We've seen how the law reveals, how the law arouses, and how the law kills. And we'll have to have a, a to uh, we'll have a week to pray. Uh, that enlightening empowerment shows us how to practice what we've learned this week. And with that, that's all I have. Uh, 
it's always appropriate to remind us that sin was defeated on Calvary through justification. It is being eradicated in our lives, in us, by sanctification. Uh, as we grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and become transformed uh, into his likeness. Jesus Christ on an old rugged cross, on a hill called Calvary, after he hung, bled, and died, they took him down uh, and they buried him in a borrowed tomb. He was there in that tomb for three days. But just like in the Garden of Eden, God gave the commandment that like he gave to Adam and Eve uh, that they should not, that they could eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat thereof. For the day that they eateth thereof, they, they shall surely die. And I, I paused and reiterated, but. Because oftentimes in the Bible, when we see the word but, the conjunction but, it's an indication that God is about to turn something around or something is about to change from what it was to what it's going to be. This is uh, long before the Ten Commandments, that commandment that he get, God gave to Adam and Eve. But now on a hill named Golgotha, the one who is the tree of life, changes what took place in the Garden of Eden. He hung, bled, and he died. But then he rose from the dead with all power in his hand, in heaven and in earth. So my, my time with you today has depleted. So until next week, stay safe. And don't forget to vote by November 3rd. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, help us to know the law so that we can know what it can do and what it can't do. Then help us to take up our cross daily and follow Jesus. In his eternal name we pray. Amen. So practice safe distancing. Wear your mask. Stay safe. Wash your hands often and vote. So long.